Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 9. Francis Sternhagen, A Life on Stage and Screen Frances Sternhagen, an American actress known for her versatile performances on stage, film, and television, passed away on November 27 at the age of 93. Born on January 13, 1930, in Washington, D.C., Sternhagen was educated at Vassar College and the Catholic University of America, where she nurtured her passion for drama. Her career began in 1948, marking the start of a journey filled with critical acclaim and awards. Sternhagen's Broadway debut in 1955 in The Skin of Our Teeth was quickly followed by an off-Broadway debut and her first television appearance. She won two Tony Awards for Best Supporting Actress in The Good Doctor and The Heiress and received five other Tony nominations for her remarkable performances. Sternhagen's portrayal of the title character in Driving Miss Daisy in 1988 showcased her exceptional talent, earning her both critical and popular acclaim. Her off-Broadway work earned her three Drama Desk Award nominations, further solidifying her status as a distinguished actress. In film, Sternhagen made her debut in Up the Down Staircase and continued to impress with roles in The Hospital, Outland, Misery, and The Mist. Her final film appearance was in And So It Goes. On television, she is perhaps best known for her role as Esther Clavin on Cheers, earning two Emmy nominations. Her other memorable TV roles include appearances on ER, Sex and the City, The Closer, and Law and Amp Order. Sternhagen married Thomas A. Carlin in 1956 with whom she had six children. Her passing marks the end of an era in American theater and screen, leaving behind a legacy of outstanding performances and a profound impact on the acting world. Tribute to Francis Sternhagen. Number 8. Tim Dorsey, a literary icon with a unique Florida flavor. Tim Dorsey, a distinguished American novelist renowned for his Sergei Storm series, passed away in Islamorada, Florida, on November 26 at the age of 62. Born in Carmel, Indiana and raised in Riviera Beach, Florida, Dorsey's deep connection with the Sunshine State profoundly influenced his writing. A graduate of Bishop Girton High School in Nashua, New Hampshire, Dorsey pursued higher education at Auburn University. There, he honed his writing skills as the editor of the student newspaper, The Auburn Plainsman, courageously tackling subjects like racism. After obtaining his bachelor's degree in transportation in 1983, he ventured into journalism, initially covering police reports in Montgomery, Alabama. Dorsey's career blossomed in Tampa, Florida, where he joined the Tampa Tribune. His roles there were diverse, ranging from political reporter to night metro editor, showcasing his versatility in journalism. In 1999, he embarked on a full-time writing career, a decision that led to his emergence as a celebrated novelist. His literary legacy is largely defined by the character Serge A. Storms, an eccentric and morally driven vigilante who traverses Florida to enforce his own justice. Dorsey's portrayal of Storms afflicted with multiple mental illnesses yet driven by a sense of moral absolutism, captivated readers with its dark humor and ingenious storytelling. Serge's adventures, often accompanied by his polar opposite sidekick Coleman, highlighted Dorsey's unique narrative style, blending psychopathy with a twisted sense of justice. Residing in Tampa with his wife and daughters, Dorsey was an avid fan of the Tampa Bay Rays and the Boston Red Sox. His deep affinity for Florida and its unique cultural landscape resonated through his work, leaving an indelible mark on contemporary American literature. Tribute to Tim Dorsey. Number 7. 
Thomas Augsburger, a visionary in the world of media and film. Thomas Augsburger, an influential figure in the international media and film industry, passed away suddenly at his Hollywood Hills home on November 28th. At 60, Augsburger leaves behind a legacy as a pioneering media consultant and producer, founder of Eden Rock Media, and a guiding force in numerous successful film and television projects. A German-born attorney, Augsburger's career was marked by his impactful role as an advisor to Germany's Leonine Studios and the Tele München Group. His strategic insights were instrumental in significant investments, including in Lionsgate Entertainment and the acquisition of the Mutual Film Library. His keen eye for potential saw him acquire pre-buys for blockbuster hits like Marvel's Iron Man, The Hurt Locker, Shutter Island, The Twilight and John Wick franchises, among others. In television, Augsburger's acumen was evident in securing German-speaking rights for series like Flashpoint, Anger Management, and The Night Manager. As a producer, he was known for his support of first-time writer-directors, contributing to films like Incident at Loch Ness, Waiting, Mr. Brooks, Tucker and Amp, Dale vs. Evil, and Solace. His executive production roles extended to series like Professionals and Spy City, Additionally, Augsburger was a founding partner in several media ventures, including Filmaka, Best Ever Channels, and Liquid Light, and served on the Lionsgate board from 2002 to 2004. Survived by his wife Jana, daughters Tessa Lilly and Helena Lucia, and son Nicholas Alfred, Augsburger's death has resonated deeply within the industry. Tributes from colleagues like Lionsgate's Joe Drake, Toby Emmerich, Patrick Waxberger, and Zach Penn reflect his diverse talents ranging from legal expertise to opera singing and his profound impact as a friend, colleague, and family man. Tribute to Thomas Augsburger. Number six. Victor J. Kemper, a visionary cinematographer and influential artist. Victor J. Kemper, an acclaimed cinematographer known for his work on films like Dog Day Afternoon and National Lampoon's Vacation, passed away at the age of 96. His death was confirmed by American Cinematographer, the international publication of the American Society of Cinematographers. Born on April 14, 1927, in Newark, New Jersey, Kemper graduated from Seton Hall University and began his career in the film industry as an assistant at EUE Studios in New York City. He quickly made a name for himself with his exceptional talent in cinematography, contributing to over 60 films from the 1960s to the 2000s. His notable works include The Jerk, The Final Countdown, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Clue, and Beethoven. Kemper's collaboration with director Sidney Lumet on Dog Day Afternoon starring Al Pacino, remains one of his most celebrated achievements. The film, a true story of a 1972 bank robbery, was not only nominated for six Academy Awards, but also included in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. His long-standing partnership with director Arthur Hiller, resulting in films like The Tiger Makes Out and See No Evil, Hear No Evil, further cemented his reputation as a versatile and skilled cinematographer. A devoted member of the American Society of Cinematographers, Kemper served twice as its president and was honored with the ASC's Lifetime Achievement Award in 1998. His colleague, cinematographer and director Richard Crudo, ASC, remembered him as a great mentor and one of the kindest individuals in the industry. Kemper's guidance and war stories, often shared over a glass of Glenlivet, were cherished by many, including Crudo. Victor J. Kemper's legacy in the world of cinematography will be remembered for his artistic vision, dedication to his craft, and the impact he had on his peers and the film industry as a whole. Tribute to Victor J. Kemper. Number 5. Julius Becton Jr. A Life of Distinguished Service and Leadership 
retired Lieutenant General Julius Becton Jr., a revered member of the Association of the U.S. Army's Board of Directors and recipient of the George Catlett Marshall Medal, AUSA's highest honor, passed away on November 28 at the age of 97. Becton's remarkable career spanned military service, education, and public administration, embodying a legacy of leadership and commitment. Born on June 29, 1926, in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, Becton's military journey began in 1944 with aspirations to become a pilot. Although vision issues redirected his path, his determination led him to officer candidate school. He emerged as a second lieutenant in 1945, serving in the 93rd Infantry Division during the final phase of World War II. Becton's military career, marked by valor and excellence, included combat leadership roles in the Korean and Vietnam Wars and strategic positions during the Cold War. Notable assignments included commanding the prestigious 1st Cavalry Division and 7th Corps in Germany. His commendations include the Distinguished Service Medal, Silver Star with Oak Leaf Cluster, and the Combat Infantryman Badge with a Star. Becton's passion for education and leadership shone through his tenure as president of Prairie View A and M University, where he ushered in a new era of accountability. His dedication to public service was further demonstrated as he took on the role of superintendent for the Washington, D.C. school system. Remembered for his inspiring leadership and profound impact, Lieutenant General Julius Becton Jr. leaves a lasting legacy. His commitment to his country, to education, and to the betterment of society serves as a beacon for future generations. Tribute to Julius Becton Jr. Number 4. Sticky Vicky, a unique performer and Benidorm icon. Sticky Vicky, born as Vicky Layton on April 15, 1943, in Santa Cruz de Tenerife, passed away on November 29, at the age of 80. Known for her distinctive and controversial vaginal magic show, Layton was a pivotal figure in the entertainment world, especially in Benidorm, Spain. Her journey began with a 15-year dedication to classical ballet, followed by a career in dance and management at El Molino Theater in Barcelona. The post-Franco era's changing entertainment landscape led her to develop a unique magic act involving the extraction of various objects from her vagina. This act, which she didn't consider pornographic, required grace and elegance, and included feats like opening a beer bottle in a peculiar manner. Leighton's show gained immense popularity in Benidorm, attracting a multitude of tourists. Despite legal battles over her stage name, she emerged victorious, securing the legal trademark for Sticky Vicky. Her performances, a blend of shock and awe, were witnessed by over six million tourists, making her a legend in Benidorm, particularly among British tourists and Icelandic students. Her legacy extended to television, with appearances in the British sitcom, Benidorm. Her act also inspired Irish poet Robert Fallon's work. Leighton's health declined in her later years, leading to her retirement post a hip operation and a battle with uterine cancer. She is survived by her son, Eduardo Romero Aragues, and daughter, Maria Gadia Aragues, who followed in her footsteps. Sticky Vicky's departure marks the end of an era in the entertainment industry, leaving behind a legacy of bold performances and a unique contribution to the world of stage magic. Tribute to Sticky Vicky. Number 3. William Anastasi, a luminary in conceptual art. William Anastasi, an influential American visual artist, passed away on November 27 at 90. Born in Philadelphia on August 11, 1933, Anastasi carved a niche in the art world with his conceptual and abstract creations. His first major break was a solo exhibition in 1964 at Betty Parsons Gallery, following a recommendation by Philip Guston. Anastasi's work spanned diverse mediums, including drawing, painting, sculpture, and photography, marked by a profound influence from Marcel Duchamp. His unique approach was evident in works like Relief and Issue, showcasing his use of industrial materials. His art was featured in prestigious institutions like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Museum of Modern Art, 
and the Guggenheim Museum. In 2010, his artistic contributions were honored with the John Cage Award from the Foundation for Contemporary Arts. Among his notable works was nine Polaroid photographs of a mirror at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Anastasi also shared a significant friendship with composer John Cage, inspiring his memoir, The Cage Dialogues. Anastasi's legacy in the American art scene remains impactful, defined by his innovative vision and intellectual curiosity. His passing signifies the loss of a conceptual art maestro whose influence continues in the art world. Tribute to William Anastasi. Number two, Richard L. Berkeley, a legacy of leadership and service in Kansas City. Richard L. Berkeley, Kansas City's first Jewish mayor and a key figure during some of the city's most challenging times, passed away at the age of 92. Berkeley, a Harvard graduate, began his political journey on the city council before being elected mayor in 1979, a position he held for 12 years. Notably, he was also the city's last Republican mayor. Berkeley's leadership was profoundly tested during the Hyatt Regency walkway collapse in 1981 a tragedy that claimed 114 lives. He responded by demanding a federal investigation into the incident, showcasing his unwavering commitment to the city and its residents. This event marked a defining moment in his career, illustrating his dedication to accountability and public safety. Throughout his tenure, Berkeley's administration was characterized by significant infrastructure and civic improvements. His efforts led to the implementation of a sales tax dedicated to capital improvements, enhancements to the airport, and the expansion of the zoo. He was instrumental in stimulating downtown development, leaving a lasting impact on the city's landscape. Berkeley's dedication to public service earned him numerous accolades, including the Benai Barith Man of the Year Award. In honor of his contributions, the Berkeley Riverfront Park was named after him, serving as a testament to his enduring legacy in Kansas City. Remembered as a compassionate and approachable leader, Richard L. Berkeley's legacy extends far beyond his political achievements. His commitment to the well-being and betterment of his community remains a shining example of civic responsibility and leadership. Tribute to Richard L. Berkeley. Today's top headlines. News 1. The football community mourns the untimely passing of 27-year-old Matty Cusack, a former player for Sheffield United, who was found deceased at her Derbyshire home. Her family highlighted the immense pressures that female footballers endure, especially in balancing multiple jobs with rigorous training schedules. Matty, who simultaneously served as a marketing executive at Sheffield United, faced significant financial strains. Her annual football salary was a mere 6,000 pounds, leading her to juggle two jobs while maintaining an athlete's regimen. This stark reality of female athletes striving to compete professionally with limited financial support was a heavy burden. Playing since 2019 for Sheffield United women and marking 100 appearances, Maddie's passion for football began in childhood. However, her family observed a drastic change in her demeanor post-Christmas last year leading to a tragic discovery by her father in September. The police, treating her death as non-suspicious, have initiated an inquest. News 2. Shannon Doherty, the iconic star of Beverly Hills 90210, shares her courageous battle with stage 4 breast cancer. Despite the cancer spreading to her bones, Doherty, 52, remains resolute and optimistic about her future. Embracing life with a mix of candidness and humor, she asserts, I'm not done with living, I'm not done with loving, I'm not done with creating, I'm not done with hopefully changing things for the better, I'm just not, I'm not done. Her journey since the initial diagnosis in 2015 has been one of reflection and determination. Doherty underwent a mastectomy, chemotherapy, and radiation, and although she went into remission in 2017, the cancer returned two years later. She openly discusses her experiences on her upcoming memoir-style podcast, Let's Be Clear with Shannon Doherty, 
set to premiere on iHeartRadio on December 6th. Facing her diagnosis head-on, Doherty is committed to raising awareness and funds for cancer research, challenging perceptions about those living with terminal cancer. She emphasizes, we're vibrant and we have such a different outlook on life. We are people who want to work and embrace life and keep moving forward. News 3, DC Young Fly, known for his work on Wild and Out, is embracing positivity and family during the holiday season following the tragic loss of his partner, Jackie O. Jackie, a beloved member of the Wild and Out family and a cherished mother, passed away at 33 due to complications from a cosmetic procedure. Navigating through his first holiday season without Jackie, DC Young Fly focuses on grounding himself and his family in faith and positivity. Everybody's good, man. We're staying grounded, keeping God first. You know what I'm saying? Staying positive, that's really the only way, he shared with Entertainment Tonight. He emphasizes the importance of finding peace even in pain and choosing happiness for others. In a heartfelt twist to traditional holiday celebrations, DC Young Fly plans to teach his children, Nova Nala and Prince Nehemiah, the value of giving back instead of focusing on receiving gifts. We only watch people be happy. It's this time of the year we want to be happy for others, he explains, instilling a sense of joy in seeing others blessed. News 4. Patricia Pat Warren, a cherished former WJZ TV weekend anchor and political reporter, passed away recently at the age of 70. Known for her balanced and insightful reporting, Warren was a respected figure in Baltimore's journalism scene, covering key political events and stories. A native of Canton, Ohio, Warren excelled academically, graduating high school at 16. She pursued broadcast journalism at the University of Akron, starting her television career as an undergraduate. Warren's journey in journalism led her through various roles, including news reporting in Akron, anchoring in Philadelphia and Columbus, before joining WDZ-TV in Baltimore. Colleagues remember Warren as a humble, private, and godly individual who consistently demonstrated fairness and thoroughness in her reporting. Her work was not just a profession, but a passion that earned her respect across the political community and her viewers. News 5. Broadway has lost one of its most passionate and influential figures, Luigi Caiola, who passed away on November 26 at the age of 64. As a managing member of B&L Management LLC, Luigi, alongside his siblings, continued the legacy of their father Benny Caiola in the realm of real estate, focusing on residential projects in New York City. A graduate of Iona College with an MBA in accounting and a BA in finance, Luigi was not only a savvy businessman but also a generous soul dedicated to creating opportunities for others. His love for New York City's vibrant culture led him to the world of theater. In 2011, Luigi and his sister Rose established Kaiola Productions, earning eight Tony Awards and contributing to over 50 Broadway shows. Their acclaimed productions include Dear Evan Hansen, The Color Purple, and Once on This Island, among others. Number 1. Cecil Sanford, a pioneering force in motorcycle racing. Cecil Sanford, a legendary British Grand Prix motorcycle road racer and two-time FIEM road racing world champion, passed away on November 28th at the age of 95. Born in Blockley, Gloucestershire, Sanford's illustrious career in motorcycle racing began with local scramble and grass track events. His ascent in the racing world was marked by his debut in the FIM Motorcycle Grand Prix World Championships in 1950. Sanford's breakthrough came when he joined the AJS factory racing team, racing alongside the then reigning world champion, Les Graham. His skill and determination led him to the MV Augusta team, where he achieved a historic milestone by winning the 1952 FIM 125cc title. This victory was particularly significant as it granted MV Augusta their first ever world championship, a testament to Sanford's extraordinary talent and dedication. Continuing his remarkable journey in the world of motorcycle racing, Sanford clinched his second world championship in the 1957 season, this time in the 250cc class, racing for the Mondial team. Besides his world championships, Sanford's racing prowess was also showcased at the prestigious Isle of Man TT, where he achieved two victories, further cementing his status as a racing icon. Cecil Sanford's legacy in motorcycle racing extends far beyond his championship titles. He was a pioneer in the sport, a role model for aspiring racers, and a symbol of excellence and perseverance. 
His contributions to motorcycle racing have left an indelible mark on the sport, inspiring generations of racers and enthusiasts. As the racing community mourns his loss, they also celebrate the life and achievements of a true legend. Tribute to Cecil Sanford. <laughs>